bigger and even better were the bywords for the second edition of the Hong Kong International Wine and Spirits Fair. The event, organized by the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, featured tasting sessions, workshops and wine industry seminars. This year also saw the debut of the Cathay Pacific Hong Kong International Wine and Spirit Competition. Billed as the first Asian wine competition, the event was run in partnership with the London-based International Wine and Spirit Competition, attracting some 1,300 entries from around the world. We're doing food and wine matching with Asian food, Kung Pao chicken, dim sum, Peking duck, things like that. We've also used overwhelmingly Asian judges, really across Asia. What we wanted to do was something that meant something to people in Asia. For one week, 20 judges from around the region sampled some 200 wines each day. On the last day, these experts sought to find the perfect wine to match some of the most popular Chinese dishes. We want to promote wine for Sunday brunch with Chinese dim sum. The especially challenging dishes, including Kung Pao chicken, and I think conventional wisdom dictates that spicy food really needs to go with beer. Um, and that's not really the case, so it's really much left up to our obligations and our responsibility to find suitable wine to pair with spicy food. And we've done so today. 520 exhibitors are taking part at this year's Hong Kong Wine Fair. That's double the number of exhibitors at last year's inaugural event. And more than a dozen countries and regions are here for the first time, including Lebanon and Moldova. The country, which has a 5,000-year tradition of winemaking, counts royalty as some of its loyal customers. One of the biggest famous winery called Purkar which is located at the south of Moldova. They are making a specific wine which is exported for a long time to the UK and it's one of the favorite wines of the Queen. It's uh, called uh, Rara Niagara. Australia, with more than 60 wineries represented in its pavilion, represented the largest contingent at this year's fair while partner country France brought 54 exhibitors, including noted wine critics Michel Baton and Thierry Deserve. We are sure that uh, Asia and China, Hong Kong, uh, are the market of tomorrow for, for good wines. Now it's, it's our aim in this generation and the next one to, to, to educate uh, the Chinese people about our wines. Bataan and Deserve launched its first overseas Le Grand tasting event at the Hong Kong Wine Fair, bringing 30 top producers from France and Italy. The pair are authors of the highly regarded Guide to the Best Wines of France. In recognition of the importance of the Chinese market, the guide will publish its first Chinese version on the internet. Wine, it, that's not only ratings, you know, uh, scale, <laughs> and, uh, that's words and uh, feelings and... Uh, and it's normal that in the native language uh, people can communicate on wine and not only in foreign languages, you know, that's very important. Since the Hong Kong government scrapped duties last year, Hong Kong's wine imports jumped by 40% in the first nine months of 2009. Hong Kong and China, in fact, account for 60% of Asia's total wine consumption. It's those numbers that draw wine exhibitors like Giorgio Coluta, owner of Coluta Wines from Italy's famed Friuli region, to start exporting to Asia this year. We start from Hong Kong because we think that Hong Kong is one of the next, uh, the most important uh, hub for the export market in the in the uh, all the Far East area. When you talk about Hong Kong, you don't just mean Hong Kong; you mean Asia. And um, given the work or the decision of the Hong Kong government to remove duty on wine, the opportunity here for anybody in the wine business is enormous. So to a certain extent, the answer is where else would you go in Asia? Mm -hmm.